Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in our report, we're here in Venice asking just how much wetlands can help us in combating climate change. I think the role of salt marshes is underestimated. We have to make it clear that they are a resource and it's essential to preserve them. Let's start with the very latest data for January from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. On a global level, temperatures last month were 0.3 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. There were some notable hotspots around the planet, and you can see them in red on this map. In Argentina, the ongoing heat wave meant the country set 75 new high temperature records for January. Eastern Canada and the US were colder than average, and then across Russia all the way to the Kamchatka Peninsula, it was much warmer last month. Now, zooming in on Europe, in the middle of the month, Oslo hit an all-time high for January of 12.5 degrees. Then in most of France and parts of Spain, it was cooler. Staying in Spain, I wanted to highlight how the Iberian Peninsula continues to be much drier than average. This graphic shows the soil moisture anomaly for January, and that's the continuation of a trend over the past four months. Now to our story, and this month we're reporting from the Venice Lagoon on the vital role of wetlands in combating climate change. Now, these salt marshes are havens of biodiversity and act as natural barriers to storms. But what intrigues us is that they also can sequester carbon from the atmosphere 50 times faster than a tropical forest. Let's find out more. We set off from St. Mark's Square on a mission to the salt marshes of the Venice Lagoon. These vulnerable ecosystems need to be better valued and protected, according to Professor Andrea Del Paz. There's a lack of awareness of the potential of these systems to store organic carbon to help combat climate change. That potential he's talking about relies on a relatively simple process. First, the plants here capture CO2 from the atmosphere as they grow and then they're regularly flooded by sediment-rich tides which bury foliage and roots in the mud. You can literally see carbon sequestration in action here on the lagoon. In the uppermost part of the core, we can distinguish several elements, including both small and large roots, like the one we've just cut. There's also a lot of other very small plant fragments like leaves or bits of plant remains that are actually what store carbon in the sediment. In their labs at the University of Padua, the scientists can calculate how much carbon is stored in different wetland zones and even determine its source. What they found is there's a huge variety in carbon storage levels across the Venice Lagoon. We see an average value of about 270 tonnes of carbon per square kilometre per year. However, the variability is quite high, ranging from a minimum of about 50 tonnes per square kilometre per year to a maximum of over 500 tonnes per square kilometre per year. The lab results will be used to determine exactly which kinds of plant, soils and environmental conditions are best for sequestering carbon. In the meantime, the wetlands just need to be preserved. We have to protect them from erosion at the margins. And then we have to try to help them in their vertical growth by making sediment available that can settle on the surface of the salt marshes, that can help them grow vertically and at the same time can bury organic matter in the soil for hundreds or thousands of years. Now here's a final figure to underline how important these areas really are. The 43 square kilometers of wetlands in the Venice Lagoon can sequester a quarter of the total yearly emissions from boat traffic in Venice. You can read more about it on euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate now in collaboration with Copernicus.